people were talking more about energy and metaphysics and stuff like that. Metaphysics is the study of energy. How can some people not know that? <laughs> you know, a lot of people come from places where they're just, they don't know mm -hmm. that, you know, they have a soul that's trying to communicate yeah, with yeah. them. Um, like I didn't grow up with that information or, you know, you're, you're, you're just, you're alone, still quiet time. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's a, going back to what I really need to listen to my own advice more. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Welcome to Mamwa. I am Gordy Camp, your host, and this is the podcast that includes you into my most famous song lyrics. He's a middle-aged man with an attitude, and he didn't even have one till he met you. That's right. I'm the middle-aged man, and my attitude will chatter us through all things that I'm passionate about, from spirituality, the gym and fitness, food, traveling, and music or movies. Quick disclaimer, this list is not exhaustive. So you can get on or you can get off and join us for the episodes that you like the sounds of. Dip in or dip out, as long as you keep dipping. Either way, we've got something to say and we're going in three, two, one main part of living within our own body is remembering that we have a soul and our soul needs to be cared for and fed. I am sure some of you or most of you would have heard the phrase soul food. Welcome back to Mamwa. I'm Gordy Camp, and today we are talking all things related to your soul. So, with messages from your soul spirit, we are joined today with a leading soul interpreter and intuition and life coach, Janet Sandberg. Janet, how are you today? I am wonderful. Thank you. Thank I'm excited you. to have this conversation and talk to you again. Yeah, thank you for joining us today. So just a bit of a background update for the listeners or anybody watching on video. Janet and I actually had a conversation on Janet's podcast, um, Soul Wisdom, Phoenix. Phoenix Wisdom. Phoenix Wisdom. I wrote that down <laughs> wrong. Um, so on <laughs> Phoenix Wisdom, we had a discussion about suicidal ideology. So if you've been following my podcast here on Mamwa, you would have heard that in episode seven weeks and weeks ago, um, or you might have picked that up in season two, episode four on Phoenix Wisdom podcast over in Janet's website. So if you haven't seen the full episode, head over to Janet's website, Phoenix Wisdom podcast on suicidal ideology. Um, and you'll get the full episode on, on here. You would have only heard like small snippets during that episode. So if you want the full, get your teeth into it and you want to hear me getting all emotional and like nonsensey, um, it's not nonsense. I know. Um, but if you want to hear me getting all sensitive, let's say, uh, head vulnerable. over vulnerable. There you go. Thank you so much. Um, head over to Phoenix <laughs> wisdom. Um, so today then, Janet, um, Let's start with, you're a soul interpreter. Now, for me, I'd never heard of a soul interpreter before. And I don't know if some of the listeners, this might be the first time they're hearing about it as well. So what is a soul interpreter? How did you get into that? Uh, that's a long story. Um, it's also a title I gave myself. So I don't know if there's any other out there, but that just describes what I do. Um, trademark it because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's been a, a lifelong road really. So, um, I've been a medium my whole life. Um, but I didn't know what that was until I was in my forties. Um, so that took a long time. I've always experienced the world differently because I could sense energies yeah. in a way that other people didn't. Um, and it, it took me a long time to really figure out, you know, how I was experiencing the world, why I felt the way that I did all the time. And then it wasn't the same as most of the people. <laughs> um, and when I was, well, I guess I, when I was in my teens, um, I first started with crystals and learning about, um, you know, they all have different vibrations and energies and healing properties um, and all of that. And that was sort of where I first started dabbling in energetics and metaphysics. And I learned about auras and I learned, you know, it was, and, and that was in the eighties. So it was very difficult to find information. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And then over time, and then I had 
got married and had kids and life kind of took over for a long time. When I was in my 30s, which is now 20 years ago, crazily enough, I don't know where time has gone, um, things started becoming a little more um, out in the open, I guess. And um, Reiki started being talked about and and in the right circles, you know, you would, people were talking more about energy and metaphysics and stuff like that. Metaphysics is the study of energy and yeah. energetics. So just before you go, go on, when you say metaphysics, then when I know when I started looking into my psychic abilities and that exercise of tuning in, what came first for you? Was it the knowledge of metaphysics and the science behind it or was it kind of the spirituality side of it and the the books that were available to you what came first was it the proof or the no 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 it was me and how i was feeling and mm -hmm. me trying to get answers to explain yeah the way that i experienced the world um and when i started you know, when I came across these things, I was like, oh, this just makes sense. Yeah. Like, it was all just like, oh, of course. Like, why isn't this knowledge out there for us? Yeah. Um, and luckily, it is a lot so more now. So when I started learning Reiki, that was sort of my, my jumping off point. That taught me how to really use the energy that I was feeling and access everything basically mm -hmm. um and learn that the energies that i had always felt and experienced um i could use that skill to help other people and i was like oh this this is why i do this this is why i can feel these things is because i'm i'm meant to be here to help other people um and then as with all things the more you do something the more you practice the better you get yeah and over time sort of so that led me down and i learned you know from reiki i learned a dozen different energy healing modalities i you know just kind of went crazy and learned everything that i could about everything um um i was then able to start receiving messages so that then opened up the mediumship thing that i'd had since i was a kid but didn't understand it or know what was happening so then I was able to to understand that and do it on purpose yeah. instead of just like whenever it would happen so randomly. Your intuition, if I'm just listening correctly, your intuition is what you went to find out more about. You you yes. trying to figure out what you were feeling and like what the energy sense was, but the actual yeah. message side of it didn't come till later. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So when you've done all that research and you understood i'm going to call it the basis of mm -hmm. those feelings right i know for me like when i started training i'm going to put quote marks here air quotes when i started training i really struggled with closing down so for anyone who doesn't is listening to this for the first time there's when you're receiving senses messages whether it's auditory visually um or an intuition, emotion, then these can come to you in a, a whole sense of different ways. For some, it starts as one. For others, it might start as one or two. But for me, I couldn't stop it. And when they started, I got really scared. So mm -hmm. how did you know to stop these? Um, again, I'm using air quotes for anyone who's not watching on video. But these messages that we get, how did you know to shut them up, basically. Um, for some reason, I am the opposite way of most intuitives, empaths, okay. whatever you, psychics, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And I am, I'm automatically off, and I have to turn it on on purpose. And I think that's because I had these weird things happening to me as a kid mm -hmm. that I didn't know what was happening, and I shut it down. So I'm like, this is weird. This is unusual i don't know what this is so i just stopped it yeah um and then i just sort of went through the rest of my life shut down mm -hmm. until i 
I learned what that was and I learned how to access it on purpose. So that's what I do now. Like I don't, I'm, I'm off until I decide to be on. Yeah. Which so, has its pros and cons as well. Cause then I don't just get like the random intuitive hits as, as often as most people. Yeah. So I'm very growing up. I was very empathetic with everything. And mm, I was just always, a hard way to be. I was just always standoffish because I didn't want, I didn't realize at the time growing up, but I just didn't want to constantly feel the way everyone else was feeling. I wanted to leave, yeah. leave everything behind. But when I was actually tuning into the other side and taking messages and listening to what was coming my way and honing in on that, I had to go to spiritual church and I had to ask for help because I had no idea mm -hmm. what was going on. I'd never yeah. been, it was really just intense. think you're going crazy. Yeah, it was just really intense. Yeah. Um, and again, I was already into, like you say, crystals and energies. And I was very spiritual in that sense, but I'd never made the attempt to take it any further. When did you decide to take it professionally then? And why did you decide to take it professionally? Um, what was the bridge? I, I started with Reiki. Mm-hmm. Um, I was also a massage therapist, um, and I sort of learned both of those things at the same time. So they went very well together. Um, so I started a practice as a massage therapist and, um, Reiki practitioner. And then, and then I moved in I, from, from the U S back to Canada and I wasn't allowed to practice massage there because rules. And <laughs> so then I just went with the Reiki because that's what I really loved anyways. The massage was more of a practical thing that I, you know, yeah. should be doing because people knew what it was. Um, but I just really loved the energy work. And then I just dove in to the energy side of things yeah. with my with my practice. And yeah, over time, all of these messages started coming. And at this point now, I, I channel sort of on three different levels. So there's um, people who have, who have passed on, like relatives and ancestors. There's um, source, the universe. Um, and also um, there's a collective uh, energy that I channel. Mm -hmm. um, and then souls, um, people's, people's higher selves. Um, and those all come in at different frequencies, which sounds really weird, but that's how I differentiate who the message is from. Yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. So it's, it's really cool and I love it. So I'm a bit of an introvert, like I said um, earlier before, before we started. So it's not that I don't like people. I've just, I've all, it comes back to me being standoffish. I. I want to look after my own energy and my own presence. So I'm mm -hmm. quite introverted in that sense, but that can lead to feeling lonely in the long run when, yes. when you're quite introverted. And I know that some of your clients you work with on that, like overcoming mm -hmm. loneliness. Um, so if for anyone listening, we just as a side note, we don't need to be introverted to get lonely. Everyone gets lonely at some at some point. But when we feel like that, how do you interpret our souls to es escape that in some way? Um, <clears throat> that's different for everybody. The thing that really helps a lot is, um, I'm gonna say, say maintenance and and habits where you know if it's raining outside you take an umbrella mm -hmm. if it's you're going to be outside all day in the sun you put on sunscreen we we do those things to prepare ourselves for the outside world mm -hmm. what we as introverts often don't or empaths don't know how to do is to prepare ourselves for the the people world so it's just um, doing some really, honestly, small things. It only takes a few minutes to make sure that you're grounded, to make sure that you're centered in your own energy and that you're protected from the unwanted stuff that's out there that you don't want to be taking on. And, and a lot of energy work is just intention. Yeah. 
And so just, just setting the intention before you go out amongst people and being <clears throat> like, I don't want their crap. I don't want that on me. Yeah. And the, the phrase being grounded, like there might be somebody listening who's like, I hear this all the time, like stay grounded, like be grounded. Like how can we, or how, how would you explain being grounded to somebody who's always feeling this way and doesn't know what that means. Mm -hmm. How That's a big part of anxiety too, is not being grounded, yeah. you know, or kind of floating away. Um, it's literally just being connected to the earth. You know, this is where we live. That's what, what keeps us bound to the earth, like gravity that's gravity and being grounded is you can think of it kind of the same way mm -hmm. like it's just us being connected to where we are in the present right now um instead of floating off with our thoughts um and just being present in your body being present with the earth um and that's as easy as just taking a minute and closing your eyes and just stomping your feet on the ground a few times and just yeah. being like, okay, here I am. This is me. This is the earth. I can feel it underneath my feet. And okay. And then you're in your body. Yeah. And I was, that was, that was actually going to be my next question then. What might that physically feel like to ground yourself? Once you're actually yeah. grounded, what might, because I, th I think when we're so used to just knowing how to do it or knowing how to stay grounded at some point we take it for granted sometimes but for anyone who doesn't know physically what that might feel like what might how would what do you think that might feel like for somebody if they're looking for a physical sensation it feels it feels just for me it feels more like i'm in my body mm -hmm. i'm less in my head and more in my body and you feel a little bit heavier maybe um because you've you've called all those pieces of yourself back together that are off kind of doing their own things i love that like a jigsaw just slotting yeah. back into place yeah i love that um okay so then if we want to help ourselves then as well as staying grounded what else can we do to help ourselves to be con to connect to that, let's call it a jigsaw for now as the soul. Mm -hmm. How can we connect to that? Um, being quiet and being still, which most of us hate. <laughs> so, it gets really awkward. <laughs> yep, yep. And it's not like you have to do that for like an hour at a time. It's really just start with a few minutes. Yeah. Um, and just sit with yourself and understand you know how you how your body is feeling at this particular time what thoughts are in my head um because often there's a billion of them but just trying to to connect with them and be like oh what what am i actually thinking of right now you know how am i feeling what's the temperature outside what am i smelling right now and just connecting to you but also connecting yourself to your immediate surroundings i heard and then you start getting thoughts that you know are from that deeper place they're not just like your to-do list or um world issues or you know whatever you you last read on facebook yeah it's thoughts coming from the inside instead of from the outside yeah I heard that there's a sound and it was based on research. Can't remember what the research was now, but the chirping of birds, 10 seconds worth of chirping of birds can center you for eight whole hours of your day. And I believe that the, it's not something like the last couple of days, I, I changed my alarm tone to the chirping of birds so that I wake up to the chirping of birds. Um, yeah. And then the discussion around it came up, came across as we historically, before technology, before evolution kicked in, we were led by birds. Like mm -hmm. when, when they migrated, we would migrate with them. And, and that's still inherent within us. Um, mm -hmm. 
So I get where the research has come come from, really. Um, but it's just yeah. a brilliant practice that might help people to center themselves and yeah. take them through a majority of their day, really. Um, yeah, I love that. We used to have pet birds. We had um, we had zebra finches, and then we also had budgies, like for years and years and years. And it, their little noises just made me so happy. And now that makes so much sense. Yeah. Yeah. But it's amazing. It's just, 10 seconds. That's it. Yeah. Just 10 seconds. But it's, it's fascinating. I love it. So that's loneliness then. And you also help with some of your clients with life goals, um, mm -hmm. relationship goals or financial goals. How does our soul, and I'm thinking about this as physical plane and energy plane. So how can our soul as an energy plane dictate what happens in the physical plane with relationships and finances and how does that fit together? Um, so we have, we have the universe source, God, creator, whatever you want to call it, who created us, or we are created as, as um, Neil deGrasse Tyson says, we are all made of stardust. Like literally we are made of stardust. Um, there's some statistic that in order for us to be born, um, just like scientifically, it's like a one in 13 trillion chance, or I don't know, some yeah incredible number that yeah is kind of irrelevant it's so big <laughs> it's huge I've, I've seen that it's, before yeah yeah so we're made of stardust and we are literally walking miracles the fact that we're human kind of gets in our way and that we have to exist on this physical material plane so when you allow your stardust self your soul to connect with the universe and all of its perfection and goodness, you can sort of bypass a lot of the human stuff that gets in our way. All of the, the doubt and the fear and the uncertainty and the chaos that we create for ourselves and the, yeah, just all of that stuff that gets in our way. And then you've just and got so the, much the of confidence it. and the yeah. clarity and, and the, the knowing that you are worthy and that you deserve these good things because that's who you are. Um, and it just, it just helps to speed up your path to those goals. And you have those goals because you know, they can happen. Mm -hmm. We don't have ideas that don't are not possible. We only have dreams that can come true. Um, and it's just oftentimes we let all of that, gunk get in the way yeah so i did an episode quite early on um when we launched about spirituality funnily enough and i just briefly to touch on it um back in the day when i was just finding myself within spirituality i used to look around and i used to be like how are these people in the world doing so well I just couldn't get my head around it. Right. So how is everyone getting through life? Like they're driving cars, they're owning houses. What do they know that I don't know? And the more I kind of looked into it, I was a bit like, there must be a rule book. There's, there's got to be rules to being on this plane. Mm -hmm. And the, the only thing that helped me think that way was having a belief system about spirituality. And again, this belief system could have come from any God or any, any energy form that you believe in, but there is a rule book and it comes from a belief that you can have whatever you want. Yeah. And that was the belief. You can have whatever you want. You just have to play yeah. the game to get what you want. Yeah. There's rules to get what you want. You just have to do it. Yeah. Like execute it. Um, and that was kind of, again, it started from a belief system. That was my point. Um, it started from believing that I was worthy of that in the first place. As soon as I believed I'm worthy of this, if they can have it, so can I. Mm -hmm. That's the first step. Yeah. Like, there isn't yeah, a secret. They're humans just like you are. Yeah. There isn't a secret. 
the knowledge is right in front of you. Just mm-hmm. go and get it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, and so- the people, I, I feel like the, peop- the people who get there faster are often, you know, the people who, who didn't have like big, big life things mm-hmm. that they had to go through and they weren't hit by traumas or, or, you know, other just regular life things that happened to them or they happened to them later in life. So they were able yeah. to progress faster earlier in life. We're all different. We all eventually experience not necessarily the same things, but a lot of, you know, um, things happen. Yeah. That's just, just it's how it is. It's barriers. And I find yeah. from the more I looked into it and the more I was asking people, how have you got what you've got? Like, how did you do mm-hmm. it? How did you get that job? What did you do? Can you help yeah. with an application? All these things. What I kind of realized is they never had any doubt. Exactly. That it was theirs. And yeah. I was like, you're so confident. I want that confidence. Mm-hmm. I want to mm-hmm. I want to have a belief in myself. And again, it's down to that. If you don't believe in what we're talking about, if you don't believe in a God or you don't have a higher being that you want to believe in, be your own God. Believe in yourself. Absolutely that's kind of as soon as you get rid of the doubt and you think i can have what i want in this world there's enough of everything to go around Mm -hmm. like i just need to take the right steps to get it yeah i just need to believe that i can do it It and behave accordingly exactly yeah (laughs) don't just go yeah steal people's cars and stuff but yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah you may get in trouble Take, but take those steps mm-hmm. in good faith that yeah. you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And and being being kind and a good person also, you know, yeah. helps you. By supporting others around you as you go, all of that comes back to you. It does. So it, it just multiplies yeah. what you're doing. This goes back to what you mentioned earlier about frequencies and the energy frequencies. Like when you are in... Some of the listeners might be aware of this or have experienced it, but when you have something and you love the fact you've got it, you just get more of it. And you're like, oh, I've got I've got it now. I don't need all this, but I'm trying to think of an example. Um, you thought you thought maybe thought about getting a new car for ages. And then you get your new car, and then all of a sudden you see that new car that you've got everywhere. Yes. Because the energy is matching how you feel about that car. Um, it's just, yeah, when you're aware of it, you see it. It's just mm-hmm. always around you. In terms of the people you work with then, without giving names away or breaking GDPR, <laughs> <laughs> um, what are some of the, the barriers that your clients put up that you, you work with them on in this physical plane? Um- were yeah. their barriers. Well, a lot of it is just what we've been talking about. It's it's the the doubt and the fear mm-hmm. and the confusion. You know, be just there's so much noise, especially now the way that we exist with the internet and social media. You know, you're being bombarded with all of these ideas. And it if you have if you own your own business, Every ad on Facebook and Instagram will be, you know, because of the algorithm, you know, how to scale your business, how to make, you know, how to break six figures in your business, how to, how to do all these things. And it's just constant from all different people and they all have different ways of doing things. And it's so easy to just start listening to all of those things. And you're like, oh, well, I obviously don't know what I'm doing because these people know what they're doing. Um, and it's like that for everything, Mm -hmm. you know, you start listening to your parents and your best friend and somebody at work and everybody has a different way of doing sort of the same thing. And what you, the only thing that you need to know is what's the best way for you to do the thing. Yeah. What is your next best step to get you to that goal? Um, and your soul will tell you that, that the instructions are there. It's just most of us are so busy and disconnected that we don't hear them. There's too much noise. Um, so, so yeah, that's basically what I do as the interpreter. I listen to your soul and I tell you what your soul wants you to know. Um, and until you can do it for yourself. Eventually, my goal is that everybody can do that for themselves. 
but at the beginning when you're just learning or you know you you're getting these these thoughts and ideas um but they just sound like thoughts and ideas and you don't realize they're actually your soul telling you what to do yeah and then you doubt them or ignore them um and then yeah i come in and i'm like no i give you that that confirmation that no no that is that is the right thing that is what you heard yeah you're not just making it up um yeah so if we could all just listen to our souls life would be so much easier it would <laughs> and if we all had that that knowing that everything is meant for us that everything we dream and think is something that we can do yeah like yeah the world would be amazing <laughs> it would again i know what intuition feels like butterflies in the stomach slight sick feeling a tight chest sometimes and i'm like my intuition is either off or I'm really excited about something and that tells me what I need to do. How can some people not know that? <laughs> <laughs> and how, like, what does that feel like to you then? If they don't know how to be led by their intuition, does that feel the same way for you? When you're reading what their you soul, mean? when you're reading what their souls try to tell them to do, mm -hmm. what do you feel that same intuition that they should be feeling? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people come from places where they're just, they don't know mm -hmm. that, you know, they have a soul that's trying to communicate yeah, with them. Yeah. Um, like I didn't grow up with that information. Um, so it's just, it's just something that, that is just a foreign concept for a lot of people. And they are told that they have to listen to, um, you know, their parents or mm -hmm. whatever other information, like they're just told what to do and they just blindly do that. Yeah. And that works for some people. They're not necessarily happy, but you know, they're, they're doing it. Um, yeah. Do the things once you know, you just start. And that, that's also sort of how I help people. I've got like 20 million thoughts in my head and I know I'm jumping from sent half sentence to half sentence. I'm on, I'm on board. It's fine. <laughs> We're listening. <laughs> um, yeah. So once you sort of start to know that you're supposed to be getting these this information from your your soul, your higher self, the universe, and you start listening, initially it's hard to to decipher. You know, what's what's my soul? What's just my brain? Yeah. Um, and that's where I come in for that that confirmation um, to be like, well, what do you think? you should be doing and they tell me and I'm like, okay, like <laughs> you don't really need me. Sometimes people do, yeah. you know, they just really have no idea where they're starting from. Um, but the more, the more we do this, the more you start listening and it's just practicing. And, and I think a lot of times people don't realize you don't have to practice with the hard stuff. Like you don't have to practice with like, what's my career going to be or, yeah. you know, Am I supposed to marry this person? You know, you start listening to your soul with what should I eat for lunch? Or, you know, you go out for a walk and you come to an intersection. Should I turn left or right? You know, it's you start practicing with the little things. Yeah. Um, or you go to a crystal shop. What crystal should I buy? Um, or, yeah, what color T-shirt should I wear today that's going to make me feel most like my best self? And that's, that's what you put on that day. Yeah. And it's in, and all of these things make a difference in how we feel about ourselves at the end of the day. You know, if you're wearing a shirt that you don't like, it's going to ruin your day. <laughs> like, yeah. Cause you're not going to feel confident. You're not going to feel like your best self. So, so I think yeah. the reason I struggle with not getting it from the other side, and I'm going to tell you a story now completely true sounds really f false but when i was born i was nine either nine days premature and i was in an incubator for mm -hmm. three weeks and in that time i died three times oh my god and they brought me back three times so the, the more i think back to that like my mom used to tell me every year on my birthday you, you wouldn't normally be here. You shouldn't be here. You're so lucky. You have to, like, like you were brought back three times. Like, take every day. And I was just, like, it was embedded in me. 
So every time I had that intuition to do something, I just did it. Like even yeah. when I was 12 and somebody upset me at school, I was like, I just wouldn't talk to them for a, a month. Like I just did what my body and my brain was telling me to do. And I, I think that's where it comes from. This Absolutely. strong intuition from being mm -hmm. so connected with the other side from, mm -hmm. from that period, I think. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think that's why I just struggled to think, how do you not know what your body's telling you to do or your soul's telling mm -hmm. you to do? I mean, I get not well, everyone just, will know. And even a lot of people being so disconnected from, from their physical bodies, you know, the reason why people don't go to the doctor until, you know, they've got stage four cancer, um, because they're just not listening yeah. to their bodies. And I remember going to see a homeopath um, years ago, and she was asking me all these questions about, you know, rituals, like daily habits of my body and what happened when this happened and, you know, everything. She's like, wow. She's like, you really like know your body. You have answers. And I'm like, do people not? Do people not know yeah. their own body? She's like, you would be surprised. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, people just go through life oblivious to, to their spiritual selves mm -hmm. and also to even their physical selves. Yeah. And again, again, until you practice or look into it further, things mm -hmm. don't, even though you may have been doing all those things and listening correctly or not listening correctly, but being in tune with a different part of that, that energy or spiritual realm. You wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. like, and you you and don't know what you don't there, know. Exactly. And there may be people listening to us going, what? <laughs> <laughs> what are these what two are on about? <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. But I think that's the beauty of it because everyone at some point when they want to take that first step to get to know, there is always an open door there. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I have a conversation with my partner because they go to the temple. They're Indian. And they go to the temple and I went to a psychic afternoon tea a couple of weeks ago and I came back with my notes and my readings and oh, that's nonsense. That's just guesswork. That's guess. And I went, okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But then two, two weeks later, I'm going to the temple to pray. It's the same thing. I was just exactly like, exactly the same thing, but <laughs> we both have a laugh about it because we get, how our different practices are exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. but We're both connecting yeah. <laughs> with the universe in different ways. It's just, it makes me laugh. Um, how do we guide our soul? So our soul can guide us. Mm -hmm. But if we want to guide our soul through the difficult times, what can we do to help our soul? Stay connected. That's, that's the biggest thing. A lot of times when we are going through stuff, mm -hmm. um, we get so focused on, you know, just white knuckling it and pushing and getting through that we, we lose that connection to our soul, to the universe. And we're just so consumed by, I need to get through this. We forget that getting through it is actually easier when we stay connected. Yeah. Um, and it's just, I don't know why that is. It just is. So just remembering, and that's really, that's the time we let our little rituals slide, you know, our morning meditations or morning walks or, you know, whatever you do mm -hmm. to connect. That's when we're like, Oh, we're too busy. We have too much to do. We have too much stress, but that's really what we need to do. It's like that little, supposed you know buddhist saying that if you don't have time to meditate for an hour then meditate for two hours because that's when we really need it so that's the time you really have to double down on whatever it is that you do mm -hmm. if it's you know taking an extra long shower or you know you're you're, you're just you're alone still quiet time yeah yeah and i think there's a going back to what I really need to listen to my own advice more. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think going back to what we're saying about faith, sometimes like if 
we need to have that belief that we are there for ourselves as well. Because mm -hmm. sometimes for me, if I'm going through those white knuckle moments and I don't have time for anything, the world's flying around me, everything's going on. I'm like, I had a moment previously. I will have a moment after. There will always be moments where I can come back to myself and take a breath. Mm -hmm. And knowing that gives you that faith in yourself yes. that yeah yeah I've had time before I'll have time again mm -hmm. like I may not feel and connected that... right now but I've got some practices in place and I trust myself to do it when it, the time comes yeah 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 and those are choices that we get to make yeah in this physical plane yeah <laughs> you know when people people and you know myself included you know, you just, you know, oh, I don't have time. Well, you can make time if you choose to. Yeah. And, and even for me, that reminder, it doesn't have to be a lot of time. You don't have to set aside an hour or two mm -hmm. every day, you know, just two minutes yeah. first thing in the morning or whenever it comes up in your day. <sighs> Take a couple then, of deep breaths, like whatever it is. At the end of every day, or if you work nights, at the start of every morning, what's the one thing we all do? We go to bed. Mm-hmm. So whilst you're lying down anyway, yeah, that's time. That's yeah. the time we have for ourselves as well. It's not just about rest. Like we can utilize mm -hmm. that time for our own meditations, like our own ways yeah. to relax. Mm -hmm. like, Thinking about the good moments that happened yeah. to you that day. Do Taking you know I mean? a couple extra deep breaths. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. As doing a little scan of your body and be like, what hurts right now? What feels good? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And there's loads of resources on like YouTube as well. Guided meditations. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Relaxation techniques, even like a one minute, how to relax your body into a sleep. Mm -hmm. That one minute a day for some people who don't even get a minute a day could be the complete turning point to connect yeah. them when they need to connect. So our inner souls all want connection. And that is one of the main rules of our exist existential energy. So if we allowed that, our confidence would grow as well. But mm -hmm. why do you think that as people, we block that in this physical plane that we spoke about? Why are we so easy to just say, I'm not going to let that talk to me. I'm not going to listen to that part of my body or my mind or... I think it's 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 worse for us in Western culture and civilization. Just I don't know for whatever reason, um, the Crusades. I guess um, when we killed off paganism for Christianity, we stopped, um, you know, listening and and being in touch with that side of ourselves. And we've just been told um, that that that's not really a thing. Yeah. Um, even though it's sort of, as we discussed, it's the same thing, only different. Yeah. And I think we're just, it's not encouraged um, unless you happen to have a really woo-woo parent that you grow up with. It's, you're kind of left to figure it out for yourself. Um, but it's not encouraged. It's not taught. Um, yeah. And then, it's just society i guess <laughs> do you know saying that though society like i when i was growing up i don't my parents didn't believe in spirituality or religion at all yet they had all these phrases like what's for you won't pass you and they used to use all these phrases which that's awesome which, yeah that's the same thing it's exactly the same thing yeah because it comes down to that energy if yeah. you feel that energy it'll come to you if it's for you it will not go around you. It will go straight to you. Yeah. Because that's how the universe works. Yeah. So even people who are not practicing still have that sense of in the cult. It's it's in it's in the culture in all mm -hmm. these little what, what are they well, called? I think especially especially more for you because of where you're from. Like you have such a deep, rich history yeah. of this stuff. It's in, it's in your blood, it's in your atoms, it's in the land. Like, yeah. So it makes sense that those sayings have come through. Yeah, like, it does, yeah. That, that didn't happen over here. <laughs> so, well, we I'll lost send that some. when they I'll came send over. it over. 
that's why I love going over there. I mean, you know, that's a, that's a whole other thing. But yeah, I'm like my DNA is like 97% um, Scottish, Irish, English. So when I'm there, like I just feel it, yeah. you know, in my in my bones, um, that all of all of that is is still there, even though it was you know, suppressed and trampled and um, not allowed for so many years. It's yeah. it's still there. But again, if it's for you, it won't pass you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We're talking about the daily grind and going through life and always, as we would say in Scotland, chavin awa, just getting on with it nonstop, always getting on with it, getting on with it. Um, but in that process, we're always thriving for something more. We're always thriving to be a better self or have mm -hmm. something better and we can like we said earlier we can go and take it we just need to mm -hmm. attune to the energies that are willing to give it to us how how do we without changing too much physically how can we tune in more what are some of the resources that you use on a daily basis <laughs> one of the biggest things is simply doing things, incorporating more things into your day that make you happy and make you feel joy, make you feel good, mm -hmm. you know. And in the daily grind, we ignore most of those things. And it can be like the little stuff, like my husband puts on music whenever he's doing any sort of chore around the house because that brings him joy, that makes him feel good. And it just makes everything better for him. So it's just doing that, like he's still doing the, whatever it is that he doesn't necessarily wanna do, cleaning out the cat boxes or whatever, but he's not grumbling and, and letting his mood drag him down. Mm -hmm. You know, he's keeping his spirits lifted. That's, that's that saying, keeping your spirits lifted, which actually means, you know, being on a on a different frequency, being yeah. at a higher frequency and and allowing yourself to have have fun yeah. and allowing yourself enjoyment. And so many of us are so serious all the time. You know, we we have to do do the things and we but you can do them and enjoy life at the same time. Yeah. And that really just brings more good stuff back to us. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't, it's, it's not mutually exclusive. Yeah. You know, doing the chores and feeling good or going to work and feeling good. Even if you hate your job, there are little things, you know, set a timer on your watch every hour. Be like, what's one good thing that happened to me in the last hour um, or on your drive home from work or, well, most of us work from home now anyways, but you know, at the end of the work yeah. day. <laughs> but it's like, you know, even in the car, like I, I'd listened to something years ago, which, told me to start using my car like if you listened you taught yourself on audiobooks in the car mm -hmm. you would do 40 hours of studying more mm -hmm. than a university student who's studying for a phd just because you don't get a certificate at the end doesn't mean you yeah. can't hold the exact same information as those people yeah so i started listening to um safe meditation tracks so they weren't meditation tracks but they were frequency music oh yeah love those um i was having those on in the background when you're working yeah like oh my gosh and it just I, it perked me up but yep i, I need them less now because i know about these birds and chirping birds but <laughs> <laughs> combine the two little, little things the like that and the chirping birds <laughs> yeah and then um just through starting you get like these suggested videos on youtube and then you've Mm -hmm. You find a video that actually resonates better with you. So you start listening to that one instead. Then you meet a couple of practitioners like yourself who teach you a little bit of something new. And then it just spirals. And before you know it, you've got better feelings. Things start coming your way without expecting it. You meet people out of mm -hmm. different scenarios. It's just, it's like a wave of change without actually changing anything. Yeah. It's bonkers. Yeah. But I love yeah. It. One of my, my early clients and, um, who is now a good friend of mine, um, 
she started coming to see me for Reiki because she was stressed. Um, she was a, a lawyer. So, you know, very, very stressful job. And so, you know, she first came to see me stressed out. Her shoulders were up around her ears and, you know, she was just a ball of tension. And we had her session. She felt great. She was, you know, less, less stressed, more relaxed, felt really good. And she came to see me every week for probably a year. And throughout that year, she bought a condo. She got a new job. She uh, met the man she eventually married. And it was all because she was just doing these little things and her vibration was increasing. She was less stressed, more happy every day. And it just allowed all of these good things to start happening. Yeah. And she was just like this. And for me, cause I could see it from the external perspective, you know, she'd come in and like, have you noticed all of these things? She's like, Oh, okay. You know? And then she'd come in, then she started noticing them. She's like, I had great boundaries at the courthouse today. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> and so it's just, yeah, doing, having one practice, you know, for her, that was an hour a week. Yeah. And it changed her life in the best possible ways, in all the ways, you know, financially, in her relationships, and, you know, reaching her goals. Um, and it, it's just amazing to see what happens when you start making that choice to just feel good. Yeah. That's all she wanted initially. She's like, I just want to feel better. Mm -hmm. And yeah her whole life changed because she decided to feel better yeah and it's again vibration the energy vibration mm -hmm. and some people might not put these two things together but i saw it's funny because i seen a video last night on one of the social media sites and they were playing music with sand i don't know if you've ever seen that and the sand forms a different geometric shape depending what sound comes out of the speaker oh yeah 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 and that just it resonates the whole vibration thing because when we talk about frequencies for anyone listening and is still sitting there think or walking or driving thinking what <laughs> then oh i have i have another example for that but finish your story first there's it just puts sound and vibration and energy together when you see it happening and when you think about it as a physical representation of what we're talking about it makes more sense you can believe in what we're saying because it's exactly the same thing it's just visualized um so a way to sense sensing energy we all do it um so if you're you're with other people at a party or whatever and you everything's you know great happy whatever you leave the room to go to the bathroom or go get a drink whatever and you come back and suddenly, like, everything feels different. I've had that. You know, and because, you know, they've been talking about you while you were gone or somebody just had a fight <laughs> with their partner or something. But you notice the difference in the room. Nothing has changed. The same people are there. It's the same time of day. You know, nothing has changed except everything has changed. Yeah. And we can all feel that. And then you're like, what just happened? And that's energy. That's what we're talking about. That's that frequency of going from a high vibration to a low vibration. And everybody can can feel that. Yeah. And knows that feeling. Yeah. It just every little thing like that constantly. I don't want to keep repeating myself, but going back to faith and the belief, it just cements it all every time that happens. That yeah, I am still feeling. I do trust my instincts. I do trust I'm being sent messages. <clears throat> I'm being led to react a certain way. I'm like guided mm -hmm. in the, in one way or another. So what's talk to me about your services then. What do you, you've got a website. What's on your website and how can people find out more about what you do? Um, go to the website. <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> Job done. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. You can find me there too. Um, so 
I, I do, I do all the woo things depending on what, what people want. Some people just want to know what their soul is telling them. So I do soul, soul readings. I call them soul conversations, um, where you're talking to your soul and I'm interpreting. Um, I do, do Reiki, um, which is, it's just clearing your energy. It's getting all of that gunk Mm -hmm. out of your energetic system so that it can flow freely and, you know, things, things feel better. Um, I do sort of a little combination thing where I clear your chakras, which are energy centers. Um, And at the same time, I'm receiving messages from source about what's going on at each chakra. And sometimes you get little tips on how to, you know, continue the work at home. Sometimes it's, I don't know, they're just messages about you um, things that have affected you up until now and that, you know, you're ready to let go of, um, you never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Um, that's called the universal alignment. And then I do intuitive coaching, which is a little bit of everything. So you get the, the readings, um, you get, um, guidance on what your next steps are for you to take and you get energy clearing that helps you um, feel more confident, ready, able to take those steps. So yeah, just getting you from from A to B by helping you feel more connected and aligned and um, confident. So yeah. Fab, and do you do all online as well? Everything is virtual. Perfect. Everything is online. Yeah, that's the the great thing about energy is that it travels through time and space. It does. And yeah, you don't need to be physically present. No, amazing. So reach out, guys. You know what to do now that we've told you. <laughs> <laughs> and you've written a book. What's your book? Tell us about your book. My book is actually a journal. Okay. Um, which was a, a COVID project. So, you know, when the world shut down, I was like, okay, um, thing the world is not is not happening the way it used to. And and you know, I didn't have any clients because people just kind of stopped spending money and they didn't know, nobody knew what was happening. Um, so one of, obviously one of the things I do is I channel messages for people. So I decided to channel some messages, take some of those messages and use them as journal prompts so that people could still do the work, but they could do it at home. They could learn to connect with themselves on their own terms in Mm -hmm. whatever whatever was happening for them. So there's a journal prompt. Um, there's also a picture to color cause I just love coloring. Um, so I got my friend who's an amazing illustrator, um, and artist to, to draw some pictures. So you read the prompt, you can color the pictures and kind of let it simmer. And then you can journal out what comes up for you. What does this prompt make me think of about life, about myself, about, you know, whatever, whatever comes to you and just, yeah, it's a little bit of a soul exploration. Yeah, and coloring is a great mindful practice as well. Mm-hmm. Right, mindfulness. Yeah. It just it really helps you to clear, focus, and release yeah. at the same time. Yes. Yeah, and there are there are thirty prompts, so you can, you know do it as like a month long ritual where every day you're doing this, or you can use it like Oracle cards and just open to a page and be like, this is the message that's meant for me today. Um, Yeah. So, and it's called spirit would like you to know a coloring journal to explore your soul, I think is the whole subtitle. Um, But yeah, and it's, it's on Amazon. So go and check it out guys. I'll put it in the notes. Okay. Janet, that's been great. I've yes, loved it, it has. and it's been amazing to see you again. Yes. Thank you for coming to spend time with us. Thank you all listening for joining both of us today and tuning in to this episode of Mamwa. It has been great to have you with us both. And don't forget to drop us a comment. Keep the conversation going in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Make sure you don't miss anything. Stay tuned for future episodes. And follow us on Facebook, Gordy Camp TV, and at Gordy Camp on Instagram and Threads. Until next time, look after yourself and whatever you're doing, be well and let your soul live. Yes.
Have a great day.